Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So, uh, it's late at night, I've just finished a Grim Reaper shift, and it's Thursday, which means that Alison is doing Dungeons and Dragons with her friend. So I've snuck in here with Pickles. Pickles, where are you? Oh, where are you? I think she's hiding. She's just experienced rain for the first time. She's incredibly upset about what rain is. And my shoulder is now ripped to pieces, which is lovely. Uh, fuel lines, fuel lines are going back on. So if you remember the original problem with the fuel lines is, this may not come out of the camera, uh, rusted and to the point where, I mean, maybe you could save them, but I just don't want to risk it, to be honest. So I'm going to go with copper instead. Now you guys have uh, picked up some complaints with copper. First of all, you said uh, um, you have to worry about galvanic potential. Now my understanding with galvanic potential is when you uh, have two metals come in electrical contact with each other, like well, like they're doing now, like with that piece of copper and that piece of steel, and, and you'll um, uh, increase corrosion. But as far as I know, that's not relevant because my piece of copper here is going to be completely isolated with plastic. Uh, it's going to go on plastic, it's going to go on rubber, it's not going to touch metal anywhere. So let me know if you think I've got that right, but I'm pretty sure I've got that right. The other possible problem is that we may have had a reaction between the gasoline and the, uh, which is just standard UK gasoline, and the copper and or problems with the brake fluid, because I'm going to be doing brake fluid as well, because the brake pipes are just, are just not happy with the condition. Um, brake fluid is very corrosive, obviously. However, I just can't find any major evidence on the internet after searching. So let me know if you think I've missed anything. But as far as I can see, I just cannot see any major react chemical reactions between, you know, base copper, metallic copper, and, um, and gasoline or brake fluid. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, what I'm doing here in terms of shaping it is I, it's the first time I've ever done this, so I'm learning as I go. I've got the original steel line there and I'm putting the copper, as you can see, against it and bending it around the corners as best I can with that kinking. Very important not to kink, obviously, the copper to weaken it. The, uh, the good thing about the steel is it's strong. Steel is very strong, hence cars strong. Copper is horrendously weak, brittle, crackable, I don't know what the words are. Um, so I've got to make sure it is going to be positioned that it will not vibrate, bang against something or whatever because it will just split. Uh, so I've got to be just a little bit careful about that, how I go about that. So we'll do with that, one, do with that while I'm there. Now I haven't managed to find replacement, you guys said get steel lines. and Yes, obviously that's the best thing to do, get new steel lines. I can't find them anywhere as a 26 year old car and this version was imported from Japan only uh, because of the, the mixture of the engine and the fuel tank and, and the body. I just can't find these lines anywhere. So if you can find any of these lines for a 180 SX 94, let me know, but I can't. Uh, so yeah, so we're going copper and um, we're just gonna see how that goes. Right, so I've, I've chopped that off now and let's see how she fits on the car. This is the high pressure line, yep. Okay, welcome back. Slight change of plan. We've started putting one of the fuel lines on and it's going on okay, um, except one thing I found is that it, I can't put it on fully until the brake line goes on just because of the position so I've switched to the brake line now so what I've done is I've got brake line, diameter, copper and I matched it up that end and again I've married it to the um, uh, the steel line I'm just forming it now I've made an error in my calculation I've come out two inches short Whoops. Um, and that's a bit annoying and I'm really reluctant to start again from scratch and get new uh, pipe. So I'm going to try and bodge it. I'm going to try and see if I can cut out some of those curves, optimize a bit, and free up the extra two inches. I may not be able to. It may all be a waste of time, but we'll see. So um, yes, let's see how that goes. Uh, a bit of a problem. So I got as far as getting the brake line, the and both fuel, high pressure and low pressure fuel lines on the car, which was great. I mean, it looked cool. It took ages, but we got it done. Then I went and did a little more research, talked to the guys on the SXOC, which is the owner's club for that particular car, and they said, no, don't use copper, um, use Kunifa, which is copper nickel alloy. Uh, costs a bit more, but um, it's superior in its durability, strength, and resistance to crack. So, I spent this morning taking the bloody copper ones off, which is such a pain in the butt, uh, but I've done that. Um, I've left the brake one on, 
because I got that brake line, I didn't buy it per se, I just got it from a garage. Um, and so I assume, I never asked, but I assume it would be Cunifer. Uh, because why would a garage be giving out, be putting copper lines rather than Cunifer? I mean, let me know what you think, but I don't know how to tell the difference visually. Copper and copper nickel alloy. So that's uh, what you think. So that's what, four, four mil, five mil standard brake line uh, from the garage, just from a reel. Uh, which I flared and attached. That so goes from the master cylinder there down. It's been a bitch to shape because you can't get your hand anywhere. All the way down, and I put all the brackets in and everything all the way down to the uh, you know the T junction, obviously for the rear. So that's in. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to have to remove that. Uh, wait a few days for the Kunaf to arrive. My, the one challenge I've had. I've never done this before. One challenge I've had is is bending it so that it doesn't kink, that's the right word. Just looking for an example, you can see those corders, that copper's kinked there. I hate the idea of kinking something because you just know that's stretching something that shouldn't be stretched. So I don't know if there's a bending tool or something or any technique. I tried bending these around a can, but it just made it worse to be honest. So, I um, don't know, a bit of a tough one. And this stuff, uh, the Four mil is quite easy, four or five, whatever it is, I can't remember. It's quite easy to bend, but bending this with your hands is really hard. So you need a proper, you know, you need leverage. and uh, So it's a bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Learning as a go, basically. So, wait for the Kunafer to arrive, and I guess we try it again. Okay, so my rear braided brake hose has just arrived, which is great. I've already got braided brake hoses on the front. The brake hose is... This bit here, uh, from the hard line of the car, where I'm kind of pointing there, to the brake caliper there. And you can see this is a uh, OE, basically a 26 year old piece of rubber, which is probably, it uh, can split and can collapse, it can have all sorts of problems. So that needs to go, and that might be a bit of trouble getting it off, because it's probably never come off before, but we'll try and get it off, and then we'll get these ones. They are the HEL make. To the biggest makes of those as far as I'm aware. Um, let's get to it. Okay, that didn't quite work. So the idea is that these replace those, something like that. Uh, but what happened was that those ones there were just so rusted they will not come apart. So I end up having to take all of the rear lines up, so up to the kind of T junction where it starts to go forwards forward to the car, these are the lines. Um, it's a bit annoying, I didn't want to do that, but it's a good chance to inspect these anyway, because I wasn't planning to replace them. And um, I probably just caught them at the right stage. They're just starting to rust under this paint here, and other places where they've been hit by stones and stuff like that. And there you can see. So what I should do, I do have uh, copper Kunafer to replace these, but you know, steel is always better than copper, unless you have to use copper. So I will refurb these, uh, retreat them, repaint them, and then break these off properly if I can. Um, just add some heat to it, uh, steel, so I can add some heat to it, shouldn't be a problem. And um, get it all apart, reattach these back on, and then um, I think we're good to go on, so that should be okay. Okay, that went good and bad. So, the let me think the near side, the port side, went well. I managed to get the unions apart, and what I've done now is uh, I've rust treated this, and it looks a bit funny, but it's fine now. I just treated it and painted it, so that's the old steel line, which is great. And attached the braided hose, so that can go on now. Uh, and the other side, which is this, um, I couldn't get the union, so this is the right side, starboard side. I couldn't get the union apart at all, whatever I did. So I had to scrap uh, that hard line. So over this side, what I did was I created a new line out of copper. Turns out it's not going to further brake lines, it's actually copper, but it's I'll have to do it for now. I uh, kind of see it around there. It's that little copper elbow around there. And um, and there you can see it goes to the new braided hose, which comes through here to the caliper. Ta da! So let's get the port side on, and then that is the rear brake hoses and brake hard lines on the Vic. Okay, other side done. Braided hose on, and I've uh, got the old painted steel line. On there, somewhere back down there. That's that. Uh, next, we need to wait for the new fuel lines to arrive. Hello, Valley viewers. It's Sunday again. I'm in a rare good mood, which is nice. This is the Kunafer that's arrived. 8mm 
uh, hard pipe for the fuel pipes. This is the copper nickel. Now you can tell if I have some copper to put it against. There we go. So those are the copper lines. So those are the old steel lines. Those are the copper lines that I replaced them with, which are actually pretty good. But as per recommendation, I got Kunifer. Now if you look at the difference in colour, I'm not sure how well that comes up in the camera. You see the copper is obviously copper colour. Kunifer is half. It's almost like half copper, half silver in colour. Um, and it's, you can tell it's much tougher than the copper. Obviously the copper is prone to splitting. This is like, it's more like working with steel. Uh, like, you know, it's actually tougher than steel, because I've tried the steel there. This is like some kind of super metal alloy. And now the only problem with it is it's obviously like mega tough and it will never die, but, or corrode, hopefully, but it's really hard to work with. The copper is super malleable. I can bend that. This, um, I'm just, I'm struggling to bend it. I'm not strong enough. And obviously, working underneath the car, you know, there's no tools you can use under there. Anyway, um, so we'll see how we get on. We're going to put the uh, both the high pressure and low pressure fuel lines on. The brakes lines are already on there and done. They are copper, it turned out, not Kunifer. So they'll have to be replaced at some point. But you know what they'll do for now because this is a massive pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, let's see how we got on. Okay, welcome back. All done. It took all day in the end. It was very tough. Like I said before, this uh, copper uh, stuff was really easy to work with, but this alloy was really hard to work with. You can see why they use this kind of thing on planes. It's probably two-thirds the weight of copper, and it's stronger than steel. It's just crazy, that stuff. Anyway, I got it done finally. Uh, See if we can find the torch and I'll show you. So, going from the front, uh, slow pressure line, these are all new rubber lines, proper gasoline rated lines that I bought. Uh, high pressure line, uh, brand new air, uh, fuel filter that I bought, rigid OEE type. Uh, it goes down there and then it goes into the Kunifer lines. Let's go and have a look down there if we can. Oh god, sick of laying down there. Uh, still haven't got the clutch lines back on yet. There we go. There we go. Uh, so, kind of hard to see, but you can see these lines. They're not particularly pretty, but solid. Like there's no weight. You know, that's as hard as I can push that. It's not going to move. So everything's pretty solid. You can see that goes up there to the to the rubber lines. Get along here. Uh, brackets, I've just used the original brackets, which are fine, and clips, spacer clips. You get a little bit close um, in point, so what I'm going to do is create a little spacer that I can space in between them just to space them out a bit. Again, muscle power just isn't strong enough to pull them apart, it's just too tight, too tough. So I'll get a little shim, I can shim in there with a hammer that won't damage them. Shim them apart is probably the best thing I could do. The copper line, the, the brake line, is like butter. It's so weak in comparison. Like that, look. Uh, the problem was access. Purely the problem was the copper line, no problem. Kunif lines, because it's so strong, and the lack of access, and try not to damage things. The bloody mare. See the uh, copper brake lines. The Union Junction there, and then they go up and just an area above the subframe, cut through there. I don't know if you can see them there, but then they come out there for another clip, and then they go into these lines. I've actually used older, old lines, not twenty-year-old or ten-year-old lines for that for them. But at some point, I'm going to replace them for with the new rubber that I've just bought. Just can't be bothered at the moment. Up there and into the pump mechanism. So, oh, look at that. <laughs> Where is it? Woo, hedgehog. So, that is kind uh, of a fuel lines, copper brake lines, all fitted. Uh, one little bit that I'm not quite happy with is this. So, it's all copper, but if you see the master cylinder, it's still got these OE, uh, these two front ones, these just go to the front brakes. And um, they're all right, but they're, oh, I guess you can't see it. You can see where they go into the wheel arch down there, they've just got a bit rusty. 
so maybe I'll copper them up or couldn't fit them up at some point but I just don't think it's bad enough at the moment as it is that's where we stand at the moment not going to start the engine up yet or even try because I need to put the exhaust back on I need to weld some brackets up back for the exhaust so we'll do that next week I'll try for now